Richard Duardo and I, uh, I came up with an idea saying, hey, why don't we make little, little, little dead, dead, uh, like postcards, right? But uh, since we don't have enough money to print them, we had just started a studio in Highland Park known as the Public Art Center. And Richard said, yeah, Limon, I'll do it for you. He, made, he, he burned the stencils at Sapphire Graphics. And, and the night before, we were printing, you know, <laughs> and the, the racks were the floor. And then that night, we cut them all up and had a few stacks of them. I think I did four, four designs, four or five designs. And when I got to Sapphire Graphics, I took up a board and stuck them on there and sold a few for like a dollar, I think. And uh, those are collector's items for sure, the black and white ones I did, they're somewhere. And then um, after that, uh, what was that, 77 I think it was? Mm -hmm. um, then, uh, you know, I think I came back to South Park Graphics uh, a few years later in 1979. I heard uh, Michael, I mean the next day of the day I went to and uh, and I think I, I wasn't feeling well. I didn't go to one of the Day of the Dead in the late 70s. Uh, and then I, uh, I heard about um, David, I mean, Sapphire Graphics moving, right, in 78 or 79. And then they had moved to their new location, or the location they're, they're still at, actually, on, on uh, Gage Avenue and um, Brooklyn Avenue. And so Michael Amesqua, who lived up by where my mom's house was, uh, I saw him on the bus one morning. He goes, hey, chicken shit. Hey, what? Dog shit, what? All right. Hey, uh, Sapphire Graphics is looking for a play. So I'm going to come and do graphics, man. You know, or do something. I said, okay. And I was at that time going to uh, Trade Tech. And so just by chance, I'm hey, it's all written in the stars, it's all the alignment. The bus went right in front of the South Graphics. Right? So I get off school and catch a bus and I ended up right at South Park Graphics, went there. Yeah, I made a call and said, okay, come on in. And spoke to Sister Karen. Sister Karen just uh, said, yeah, you know, we're looking for someone to come in. And I said, my school thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a while later, I discovered that Sister Karen was using me. Like so many use me. She figured no one was coming in to South Park Graphics, none of the old guys, right? Those four guys weren't coming in and do nothing. And, you know, she had her kind of program thing going on with the schools still, but people weren't really coming there because there wasn't something that was there. there it wasn't that far, but it was still something missing because it was more of a children's program all that time at the old location. Now there was a big hall and there were rooms downstairs with all that stuff. So uh, when I got there, Willie Heron was downstairs with his band, right? Los Illegals. And um, there was the Streetscapers. They had a space downstairs also. But there was also the religious bookstore uh, that was there also, and they still had their little corner down there. And so I simply said, uh, you think I could work out here? You know, uh, I know a little bit of printing from Richard Duardo, that kind of thing, and I'm, I'm going to school for sign painting, and I could probably help you out to make signs here, because you really don't have many signs. You know, you don't even have a sign outside. So the sign painting took hold and well Sister Karen said, okay, we'll give you a, a test, you know, see if you could stay here maybe, you know, two months. So, you know, 10 years later, <laughs> I stayed here about 10 years. 10 years. 10 years, yeah. So I found out I was, you know, I was caretaker, janitor. That's where the cultural janitor thing came in. I said, hey, you know, this is, you have to do cultural things, you know, but still you have to be a janitor.